I love developing apps as a non-coder with these vibe coding tools that are around nowadays. And today I'm trying out Trey, which looks to be really, really good for both developers and non-developers because you can kind of go in deep and be in amongst the code in the editor, or you can just prompt away like me and say, hey, change that. So we're going to have a look at it today. We're gonna to download it. This is a downloadable software, unlike a lot of other platforms that operate only in the cloud. So if we just go to all downloads, I'll show you what you can install this on, a Mac with both Apple and the Intel uh, processors, depending on how old your Mac is. Then we've got Windows there as well, and Linux is coming soon. You can just put your email address in there if you wanna sign up for the waitlist for that. And then once you've downloaded it, I'll show you what it looks like, and then we will start building an app together with Trey. So here we are then in Trey, and I'm in the IDE mode at the moment, which is obviously more developer focused. You can chat with AI still, and then you can edit the code in line with AI as well. And with it being the IDE, you can switch off auto mode and actually choose the coding model or the LLM that you use to do your coding with just down here. And you can see they've got an absolute ton of models, even Grok 4 there as well, which is obviously a very well regarded. And also Claude 4 Sonnet is also very well regarded in coding. So that's great if you want to go ahead and start building like that with those different models in the IDE. But I'm just going to click at the top left here and switch to solo mode because that is me. I am a solo uh, developer. I like to build web apps myself using these kind of vibe coding tools such as Trey. By the way, there's a link underneath this video if you want to go and try it out. So I'm going to put in my prompt. Now my prompt, I wrote in ChatGPT to get it to develop an app for me that was uh, has flashcards and a quiz so we can make our own little online quiz. So I'm going to paste it in here. We've got the questions there. We've got uh, the prompt being build me a simple flashcards and quiz web app features a home screen with two buttons, flashcards and quiz, and then show one card at a time, question on the front, answer revealed when the user clicks flip and so on. So we're going to use Claude for uh, Sonnet and then we literally just press go. And now uh, Trey will get to work and start building everything for us. What's good is that you can see what it's thinking as it goes along by just reading this section here on the left. And you can see it saying, uh, I need to build a flashcards and quiz web app with specific features. And then it's going on to start working out exactly what it needs. It's creating the docs for it, which I really like too. So it's kind of getting clear on what it's about to build, but at the same time, also creating the documentation for you to truly understand exactly what it's going to do. And afterwards, it's really useful to understand the architecture of your web app. Now we can see that it's going into every little element of it, the development workflow, what it's going to build first, in what order. Um, I can see that it's going to use TypeScript and Tailwind CSS framework as well to quickly develop the front end. And that's a really popular framework. And at the top here, you'll see that you've got browser, terminal, editor, and integrations, and Figma even as well. You can connect it up to Figma so that you can put your designs directly into there. And then over here, you can see that you can integrate with Superbase, which is fantastic for the backend stuff like the database and user auth. And then OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini for all of the AI side of things, if you want to bring AI into your web app. And then Stripe, of course, for taking any payments if you're producing a web app that you intend to charge for. So over here on the left now, it's done it. It's come up with everything that it's going to do. And all I have to do is just click ready to build and then off it goes and it's going to start building that whole web app for me. One thing I really like with Trey as well is it gives itself a task checklist and you can literally see it kind of crossing itself off. If I just open this up, there you go. There's number one task is to initialize React and TypeScript project with Vite and install dependencies. That's done. Then it moves on to the next thing just here and so on. The third one being implement TypeScript interfaces and types for QA item, app state, quiz session, flashcard session. And it just keeps going through until it's done all of those tasks. It's kind of checking on itself. The task that it's just about to work on now is creating the homepage component with mode selection buttons and new questions functionality. Now, if you're a developer, this must be heaven for you to actually use a bit of software like this. And the AI is doing all of this repetitive code code work and everything, it must be absolutely amazing. And then if you're a non-developer like me, then obviously you've just been given an incredible gift that this takes a long time to learn how to do. But obviously with tools like Trey, if you're a developer, you can use it as a massive time saver. And if you're a non-developer,
developer like myself, you can have a go at creating web apps that are truly actually ready to be used in a production environment and have people come and visit and hopefully pay you for as well if you want to create a paid for web app. And there we are, our little app has been built and it's just reeled off everything that it's done here. I've successfully built your complete flashcards and quiz web app. Here's what was implemented and so on. Project setup, core features that have been implemented, technical implementation, and then the user experience. And uh, let's just test it out. You'll see at the top here, we are in the browser and that's where you, know, you get to see the actual web app. And then you've still got your documents there, integrations and so on, terminal and everything else. Else. So let's take a quiz and try it out. So there we are. Which continent is the Sahara Desert located in? I'm going with Africa, which hopefully is right. Yes, that's good. And um, what's the capital of France? There we go. Next question. Now let's try and get the answer completely wrong. I mean, which country would you find Machu Picchu? I'm just going to say Brazil. There we go. Oh, perhaps it's going to like give us a score at the end. Who wrote Romeo and Juliet? Oh, actually, was it Charles Dickens? I don't know. Romeo. Which element was the atomic number one? I'm just going to click anything on these. Um, there we are. And let's just see if it gives us a score at the end. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Because what we can do is we can actually ask it to give us a score. Oh, there you go. It did give us a score. 30%. So it didn't tell us as we went along. It waited till the end. I got a couple of questions right. And then obviously I deliberately got these wrong. And then got that one right. But look at that. That is fantastic. So we can retake with the same quiz and try again. Or we can try some new questions right there. So that was with the quiz. Is. Now let's try with this study with flashcards. There we are. Um, so this is the sort of thing you can use maybe in a classroom or something like that. You know, which continent, ask the, the whole classroom, which continent is the Sahara Desert located in? Get some answers and then click to reveal the answer and then go through the next one and so on. So this cool little web app took, I would say, about six to seven minutes, something around that, to create using Tray. Obviously, it's a very, very super simple app, but I can now go on in here if I want to and start allowing it to create user logins and everything, have a dashboard and much more. And then, of course, we've got this magic deploy button here because at the moment, this is just running in this local browser. If I click deploy, we can go ahead and link it up to Vercel, start authorization and then connect it up. And so we can operate this app uh, properly on the web, no problem. Now, this app obviously looks great on a normal desktop size computer, but how does it look on a mobile? It's very, very important. So just by clicking up here, we can actually choose from all of these different devices. Let's go with an iPhone 16. There you go. It's got a little bit of run over there I see on the next button. So we can just go in and tell it that and then it should resolve it. So let's actually give that a try. So I've typed in the problem in mobile view specifically specifically iPhone 16, the next button runs off the screen in the flashcards. So we just submit that and just, you know, like you were giving feedback to a developer who has made you an app, it will just go to work, correct the problem, sort it out, update the app, and then you get to try it again and see if it works okay. So it says there, I can see the issue, the navigation controls, um, and then it goes on to explain the exact um, situation. And now hopefully it's going to update the file in question, which is flashcardview.ts. X and then we should have ourselves a corrected app. Done. How's that? That's so much better. We've got them underneath each other now. So look, that makes total sense. There you go. Hydrogen next previous. So it's corrected that very, very easily and done so without any back and forward. Because in the beginning, a lot of these vibe coding tools were, you know, you would get it to do something, it would do it wrong. Then you'd have to go back and say, no, not like that. You've got to do it like this. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. But I think where we're using uh, models like uh, Claude Sonnet 4 now and stuff, it's just getting better and better. And I've really enjoyed creating this app with Trey. So once again, there is a link underneath this description if you want to start building your own web apps really quickly and easily as a non-technical person. And again, you do have access to that whole uh, IDE environment just by clicking at the top here. You can see now like all of the files and everything. And if you're a coder, you might be more comfortable in this environment where you can get stuck in. But that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, press that like button, comment underneath if you vibe coded any of your own web apps yet and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.